tell us about your work. My work is concerned with understanding and treating and preventing common mental health problems such as anxiety and depression. So I'm interested in the way people think and behave that might make them more at risk for anxiety, depression, particularly things like getting stuck in worry and dwelling on problems, trying to understand those processes and then using that understanding to improve psychological treatments and interventions, such as talking therapies like cognitive behaviour therapy. Tourette's Hero is a disabled-led organisation that works across art forms to use creativity and humour, biscuit, to make new pieces of work and to create social change. Donkeys! Um, biscuit, I have Tourette's Syndrome, Biscuit, which means I make movements and noises I can't control called ticks, Biscuit. So this uh, video comes with extra biscuits. Hedgehog, Biscuit, cats. A big element, Biscuit, of my work is embracing the spontaneous creativity and humour, Biscuit, that having Tourette's gives me access to. Biscuit, cats, Biscuit. But I believe that humour and laughter is a powerful tool for creating change and we can use it to tackle serious issues and that's what we do at Tourette's Zero. I work as a writer, um, I'm an author and a journalist. I am a freelance journalist so I work for um, different newspapers and magazines and mostly about um, the environment, health, uh, culture, nature. I'm particularly interested in the psychological relationship between people and the rest of the living world um, in a time of climate crisis and mental health crisis and my book Losing Eden, Why Our Minds Need the Wild is all about that, um, the, the relationship between people and the natural world. I also wrote a book about foxes called Foxes Unearthed, I had a book about nature and children um, called The Nature Seed and I'm working on a book about becoming a mum um, and I, I'm, I try and write fiction and poetry as well. Cognitive neuroscientists are interested in human brains and how we can study the human brain in a way that helps us understand human behaviour and human experiences. And I'm particularly interested in how human brains make uh, human communication possible. So I'm very interested in how my brain's helping me talk to you right now. And I'm also interested in how your brain is working out what I'm saying and other things that you get out of my voice when I'm talking to you. I'm particularly interested in non-verbal forms of communication. And that's communication that we use without talking, things that we get from, for example, from our face or our body movements, but also the sounds that we make. And I'm particularly interested in laughter, which is a very interesting form of nonverbal communication. We laugh a lot, we like laughter, and we tend to associate laughter with humour and jokes and comedy. But actually most of the laughter that you do, you're doing for social reasons. We're primed to laugh just by being around other people. You're 30 times more likely to laugh if there's somebody else with you than if you're on your own. And that makes laughter actually a very important and a very interesting social behaviour to study. What does happiness mean to you? Happiness is a complicated concept. For me, it's about joy, it's about community, it's about connection and connectivity. Biscuit. I think there's a lot of pressure to feel happy a lot of the time or to, um, I feel a pressure to uh, feel a certain way or be a certain way. For me, true happiness is about accepting who you are, uh, embracing elements of your identity, even the bits that are challenging. Um, and finding ways of accepting yourself and using that to create and build the sort of world that you want to live in. So for me, some of the things that make it hard to be happy, to skip uh, as a disabled person, are not about my body um, or about the fact that I experience pain or the fact that I uh, biscuit make movements and noises I can't control or use a wheelchair. Actually, the things that get in the way of my happiness, biscuit are systems and structures and political ideas and policies, biscuit that don't consider or value me. So one of the ways I can be happy is by speaking out against those things, by talking about the joy in my life and the challenges and the unusual and surreal bits of being a disabled person. Biscuit, cats, um, hedgehog, biscuit. Happiness is something that comes in waves and you don't have to always be happy, um, but also disabled people can lead joyful, rich lives. Biscuit, but we don't always uh, see that in our media and on telly and on our stages. Uh, and I really want to change that. Means the absence of 
um, negative thoughts or worries or stresses. Um, I can be quite a warrior and um, quite self-critical. So happiness for me is when I'm at ease with myself and um, yeah, not, not kind of at war with myself. Uh, it also, my happiness depends a lot on the happiness of the people I love, so um, my young children. Um, it also means being in the woods or um, being near trees, um, listening to a favourite song, being with friends. Um, watching a good film, um, feeling like I'm doing something purposeful. Yeah, I think there's many elements to happiness. So happiness sometimes comes from having a sense of purpose, from doing things that are worthwhile, being able to feel like you're making a difference. So I'm really happy and pleased that I get that from my, my work where I'm doing things to help other people and to understand the world. You also get, uh, I also get a sense of happiness from sense of creativity and playfulness and learning things and finding things out and again I'm really lucky that my work as a scientist allows me to do that and then I also get happiness from you know, doing things that are pleasurable and enjoyable and doing things that are fun so whether that's spending time with family or cooking or going out on the sea and doing sports like kayaking and, and swimming and surfing and things like that so happiness comes from a range of purpose, being able to be creative and learn things and doing things that are pleasurable and a good life has a balance of those different elements. As a scientist, happiness means to me a very important uh, positive emotion. Emotions are a kind of states of, of feeling that we get into often associated with different kinds of contexts or different sorts of triggers and a lot of science uh, studies negative emotion. There's a lot of work into fear and anger and disgust, but happiness is a really, really important positive emotion. And in fact, it may be more than one kind of emotion that makes up happiness. Um, so happiness to me is a really interesting psychological and sort of scientific puzzle because we know that, for example, happiness can include joy, but it might also include feelings of awe or feelings of love. And I'm really interested in the extent to which we can start teasing those different kinds of emotions out and what they mean for your, um, how your brain is involved in your experience of emotion. And I'm also very interested in how those emotions happen in the context where you're with other people because a lot of positive emotions don't happen sort of as much, for example, on your own as they do when you're with other people. So laughter, which Charles Darwin thought was a a joyful vocalisation, a joyful emotion, and which we now know is a very important social emotion. Laughter happens when you're with other people. So laughter seems to be a kind of social joy, and I'm very interested in what that kind of social joy might mean for happiness, and are there other kinds of social factors that feed into happiness? Can we train ourselves to be happier? I think it's first important to recognise that whether we're happy or not is going to partly depend on our circumstances. If we're going undergoing through lots of difficulty or stress, um, we're not likely to be happy and it probably wouldn't be appropriate to be happy. There are situations where it's normal and healthy to be feeling sad or feeling down and indeed it's that contrast between emotions that's really important. Having said that, I think what we can do is we can train ourselves to make the most of our opportunities to be happy so that when good things do happen we can get the most out of them and when difficult things happen we can be more, more resilient to them. So there's two parts to that training. One part is getting into the habit of doing things and being active in a way that can maximise our opportunities for happiness. So this comes back to the idea of doing things that give us purpose, doing things that give us pleasure, making sure we're scheduling those activities and doing enough of them. But then there's also making the most of the things that we are doing so that when something happens that could be pleasurable or we're doing something that we could enjoy, we're getting the most out of that. Out of that. So that, that involves our attention, making sure we can train ourselves, we can get better at paying attention to good things and paying less attention to bad things to get the most out of them and we can help ourselves dwell on the positives so that when we think of back we can think back to positive things and make them last longer for us so in those ways we can train ourselves so that we are more likely to get the benefits of the situations and circumstances that will make us happy do you think humans need nature to be happy so before i started racing losing eden i was a bit skeptical of the idea that 
people needed contact with nature. Um, I had lots of friends and I myself hadn't spent much time in the natural world. Um, but as I looked into the evidence, um, particularly the scientific evidence, I was convinced unequivocally that people really need opportunities to spend time in the living world um, to recover from the stresses of life and, and to restore ourselves. Um, and also I think on a kind of broader scale, um, humanity needs a reciprocal um, a close relationship with nature if we are to, um, to, to, to live healthy and, and happy lives. Why is laughter important to happiness? I think that's probably in a few different ways. So I think laughter is, it's an important uh, way, like an index of how somebody is feeling. When people are feeling good with people that they like, people that they love, and they're feeling in a safe, good place with those people, that's where you'll find laughter happening. That's Laughter lives in social interactions, but it's social interactions with particular people in particular places. So laughter is a kind of sign in those environments that you're really happy to be with those people and you're loving the company that you have and you are sharing that laughter together. And it's the sharing of laughter that's really important there because it's a shared happiness, it's a shared joy. And also laughter makes you feel good. You feel happier after you've been laughing. Laughter reduces stress and it increases uh, the uptake of neurotransmitters in your body that make you feel a nice warm feeling it actually you can actually tolerate more pain when you have been laughing because of these these endorphins these chemicals and how they affect your brain so laughter is a very important uh, sort of social sign of happiness and also a way of feeling happier you feel good when you've been laughing so laughter and happiness are interacting at a number of different levels does being part of a community make you happier for me it definitely does i don't think i'm part of a single community I'm part of lots of different communities. I'm part of a community of people who have Tourette's all over the world. Let's get, I'm part of a community of activists and artists in the UK. I'm part of my local community. Let's get, I'm part of a community who cares about children and young people and play. I am part of a community of wheelchair users. Donkeys, biscuit. All of these different types of community and connection make me happier. They're not always easy. There are sometimes difficult bits about connecting with other people and being part of a community. And I feel a sense of responsibility to be thoughtful and about my wider community. Biscuit, but all of these things make me feel connected. They make mean that I can share and give and receive solidarity. Biscuit, they mean I have a place to go when things feel tricky. Biscuit, and they do make me happier.